Exactly. Like, just walking out for what? I'm going home. We should do something greater that will be very impactful. If we're not walking out, we should at least be armed with information about issues that could impact our safety. You're right. That's true. That's true. I never thought about that. <laughs> Raider scholars want to enlighten you about the recent events and precautions that should be taken if Mays is ever involved in violent threats against our school. Florida has taken drastic measures after 17 people were killed at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School when a 19-year-old former student with a semi-automatic military-style rifle opened fire. The governor of Florida signed the Senate Bill 7626, which raises the age for citizens to purchase guns from 18 to 21. Also, it bans the sale and ownership of bump fire stocks and allows teachers to be armed in school. In addition, the law adds a three-day waiting period for permits issuance. NRA is suing to block gun laws, saying it prohibits law-abiding citizens the right to bear arms. The NRA argues people who are 18 years old are considered adults for almost all purposes, and certainly for the purposes of the exercise of their constitutional rights. Dick's Sporting Goods has stopped selling assault-style rifles after the incident. Delta has taken a stance by cutting ties with the NRA. The NRA will no longer receive the privilege of discounted flights from Delta. Violent threats against schools are popping up on social media platforms all across the nation, prompting law enforcement and school administrations to act fast, in many cases closing down schools, placing them on lockdown, and internally disciplining the students involved. What many students don't realize is that their actions could have serious consequences that can stay with them for life. When individuals turn 17, they are treated as an adult and can be faced with misdemeanor or felony charges of making a terroristic threat. These charges are not protected by freedom of speech. Potentially, you could go to jail and, in addition, lose your rights to vote, your right to serve on a jury, and your right to own a firearm. You could also be subject to fines up to $100,000. APS's policy is that students who post or repost violent threats against schools on social media will be subject to criminal offense and will be prosecuted. Here at Mays, we are prepared to take steps to isolate students, faculty, and staff from danger by instituting a school lockdown. These are very important procedures to take in any situation where a lockdown is necessary. Number one, close and lock all doors. Number two, turn off the lights. Number three, remove all bags, containers, and clothes into a hidden space. Number four, make sure to hide in the area in the room where you cannot be seen through doors or windows. Number five, turn off cell phone notifications, sound, and lights. And finally, number six, remain quiet until the building is deemed safe for movement and noise. All of these steps should be taken seriously by students and faculty. If you see something, say something. Who or what you saw, when you saw it, where it occurred, and why is it suspicious? The If You See Something, Say Something campaign respects citizens' privacy, civil rights, and civil liberties by emphasizing behavior rather than appearance in identifying suspicious activity. Factors such as race, ethnicity, and or religious affiliation are not suspicious. The public should only report suspicious behavior in situations such as an unattended book bag. Raiders, if you see something, say something. It's our responsibility. You're not a snitch. You're just keeping our school safe. Contact 678-517-5287. Do you think such gun laws really increase school safety? Not really, because if they have gun laws that bring guns to schools, then our students could get a hold of them. No, and anybody could be a school shooter, and it will be increased violence in school. And if some kid or a faculty member gets angry and they decide to um, engage in violence, then that would not be safe. OK. 
Okay, true. so that brings me to my next question. I want you guys to expound on, do you think teachers should have guns in school? No, oh, not necessarily, because it's not all about the teacher. It's about the student safety and how their parents feel. And if teachers have guns, it's more likely that the gun will be used for a purpose other than protecting students against a school shooter. Like if there was a fight or if a teacher felt threatened and they pulled a gun on a student, that would bring up a whole other debate about stand your ground laws and other things like that. Yeah. Some teachers don't have the proper training. If police officers mess up and they're trained extensively with how to use guns, teachers with limited training are Not definitely. even use training. Exactly. They just take it out on a student. Most like definitely. stuff's gonna happen. <laughs> Not to mention, students could get the gun too. So yeah. you have to think about that as well. But what I don't get, like even with the arming teachers, like if a person comes into the building with a semi-automatic ref, semi-automatic weapon, and they give teachers like handguns or something, what are they gonna do to stop a person with a semi-automatic rep? Weapon. <laughs> not to mention, it's not their duty to protect exactly. kids. Exactly. It's their duty to teach, to teach. not to exactly protect them. And if they have touch. that gun, training may not help because they may take it overboard. A student may make them mad or upset and they just pull it out. And that's and and ground to have a gun in a school full of kids, they could find it and want to play with it and all that yeah. stuff, and it could lead to more uh, incidents. It'll be multiple guns at the school. Like, if that's a gun for every teacher, every teacher like, I don't even know how many teachers are in the building. Like, that's a lot of weapons in a learning environment that don't need to be here. Yeah. And learning environment Unhealthy. shouldn't have to be like this, period. Exactly. With this generation, I think we're more fun with voicing our opinions. So I think if we find something that can really make a difference and make them hear us out, then we can get some change and all the gun violence, it'll diminish. Yeah. So what do you guys think that we can do to influence gun and weapon legislation? I don't know. What do you think? I think we can write letters to the mayor. I'll do something. True. Maybe the school board, too. Oh, and the county commissioners. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a good, a good one, idea. yeah. We're going to write a letter to our school and city officials. And you should too. Gun violence shouldn't happen at Mays or anywhere else. Hello May Scholars. First I want to thank those students who did that wonderful video to try to educate us on how to stay involved and stay engaged in our political process. It is so important that we follow all the rules as it relates to our school safety. It is very important that you write your mayor, your senator, your legislators so that your voice can be heard. Even though we walked out and we come back in, I want you to know that you still have a voice and I urge you to use that voice in communicating with those officials who can make some changes. Thank you for keeping our schools safe. Thank you for uh, buying into our See Something, Say Something campaign. We are our own safety system. We are one happy family at Mays High School and I want to thank you for that. It is my pleasure to serve you each and every day.